Yes, we can see it. Excellent. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm very excited today to talk to you about Novell GroupWise 2012. My name is Dean Lithgow. I'm the Director of Product Management and the Collaboration Solutions uh, Department at the Novell Business Unit. Uh, I have referenced there my the blog, the GroupWise blog at the bottom of that first slide, where you can always go and get great information about the product and our schedules. In addition, uh, interact with the engineering and product management team through commenting on that blog or, or participating in the conversations that are there. I want to start out our conversation today just letting everyone know a little bit about Novell and its organization. As you know, there was an acquisition of Novell last year, and with that acquisition, great things have happened with the Novell business unit and the products that many of you use and depend on for your organizations and enterprises. With that acquisition, Novell has been commissioned <coughs> to focus its attention in three major areas, and those three major products are GroupWise, OES, and ZenWorks. And with that, they put together a message that they want all of our customers to hear and know that they are very much focusing and putting their attention in these areas that you see presented. First of all, we're returning to our roots. We're focusing our attention on those three major products and we're trying to make sure that our customers who use those products are well cared for, that they know that, they, uh, that Novell is committed to these products, that each of them has a robust and growing roadmap that we are investing more engineering dollars into these products and into the sales and, and relationship management areas of our business and just doing a lot of great things around the products that you use and depend on every day. Of course, with that focus, we're also returning to some of our roots with engineering excellence, making sure that the products that you use are of high quality and that they continue to be as robust, scalable, and reliable as you've come to depend on. So we're putting engineering excellence back where it belongs. And finally, we want to make sure that we return the loyalty that all of you have given to Novell and its products over the years by making sure that we are listening to our customers, building lasting relationships, and in the end, we want to be your Novell again. You may have seen, if you've participated in any of our events or been to our website lately, some of the marketing campaign that, is, that has tried to communicate these messages out to our customer base. It's the re-campaign, rekindle, refocus, uh, re-energize, those types of messages, and this is an example of, of some of that messaging. At the end of the day, what we want you to hear and what you want you, want you to know is that we're your novel again. With that, we'll move right into the GroupWise 2012 overview and presentation. I'm very excited to talk to you about the, this product. It's been long in coming, and the first thing I want to tell you, if you haven't heard, GroupWise 2012 shipped. It is available. It is publicly downloadable. All of you are, uh, if you're on maintenance, are entitled to it, along with the other entitlements that come with that purchase around mobility and uh, SLEZ. It's very important that you take advantage of that and that you get the most out of your investment with, with Novell and, and paying your maintenance. And GroupWise 2012 is now available and download immediately. And for details about where to get that, you can go to the Novell blog uh, that I referenced on that first slide, novell.com slash GW blog. Obviously, in the next 45 minutes, we won't be able to demo all of the features of GroupWise 2012. But we do want to highlight uh, not only three major components of the product, the Windows client, web access, and our brand new iPad web templates, but we'll also try and hit on the most significant features that we believe will have the biggest impact on your organization as you roll out and adopt GroupWise 2012. And with the Windows client, we're going to concentrate our efforts on calendaring, information sharing, and integrations with Vibe and Skype. First of all, I want to 
uh, tell you that the first feature we're sharing is that we've changed the recurrence model in GroupWise 2012. And what I mean by that is we have made it easier for end users to set up recurring appointments. Whether those appointments are weekly, daily, monthly, or still you can randomly select certain days. Here you see that I can set up, I've, I've chosen daily as my option. Here is the weekly uh, view that I can set up an appointment every Wednesday. I can set a range for that or the number of occurrences that that appointment is set. And the good thing here is that in the small calendar views at the bottom, the days that will be scheduled, you'll see those highlighted in bold. So you get a little bit of a preview of what's coming. Here you see the monthly view, third Thursday. You have a range there that's easily to set up, and you can also tell that I skip months that don't have. So here you have December 2011, then it skips to January 2012 to indicate to you that you're on a monthly, every third Thursday type of a schedule. There's your yearly view, very similar type of ability to quickly set up a recurring appointments. And we also recognize that not every recurring appointment fits a pattern. And so the traditional um, customizable date range is also easy to find and to launch. And now I can select random days that don't fit a particular pattern. The next feature that I want to talk to you about is multi-user calendar. Multi-user calendar has transitioned and has a whole bunch of great new features and capabilities with GroupWise 2012. This is the traditional view that you've seen in previous versions of GroupWise, where as you have proxied users or multi-user calendars that you are managing, those can be displayed side by side. What we've added in GroupWise 2012 is, first of all, we've shifted the view of those calendars into the folder tree on the left. And what that gives you is the ability to see those multi-user calendars overlaid in a day, week, or even a month view. I also have full control over which calendars are displayed, which what data is overlaid on top of one or the other. Um, I can easily click the checkbox and turn them on and off. I can easily select the icon next to their name and change the color that is represented uh, for them. Here, here you see I've removed Scott Clayton's data, and here you see I've just selected his calendar, and that's all the data that I'm seeing. So it's very easy to get multiple views in your calendars that you are managing for other people. In addition, um, here is the week view, and you get to see that as you highlight over or hover over each particular one in that view, you can easily tell who it's from and who it's for. The next feature that we want to talk to you about today is the change that we have made to allow users to modify their sent uh, appointments or the appointments that they've already scheduled. There is no longer a resend button. Resend is now split into two operations. One is edit and one is duplicate. And there's also no need to retract. So there is no uh, retract option when you go to send it. If you want to edit or change an appointment that you've already scheduled, you simply right click on it and you'll see the new menu option called edit. And when you choose that, of course your appointment comes up and all the fields that can be changed will uh, can be changed and modified on this view. And the good part is, is you can change any aspect of your appointment. The subject, you can add an attachment, uh, generally an agenda. You can change, of course, the date and time. You can add and remove recipients. And the beauty of that is when you send it, only certain changes will cause your recipients of that appointment to receive a new item. In most cases, if you just change the subject or message body or add somebody new to the appointment, no one is affected except those people. But how are they notified of the changes? Their appointment will go bold, as you see that in the, in the Friday column there. It will go bold to indicate that there's something new. And when they click on that and open it, 
they'll get an indicator at the top of their message that says what has been modified or changed, and they can inspect those areas of the appointment and see those changes. The, the next area that we want to talk about shift, shifts into our information sharing section of our demo. We want to share that we have uh, changed the functionality to make it just as easy, easy to share an entire folder tree as it is to share a folder. So when I right click on the folder, I now have this new option at the bottom of my sharing dialog that's called share all subfolders and it's checked by default. I can add the recipients, I can set up their access and when I go ahead and, and set OK, that entire folder tree is shared. You see in the HR info that in all of its that folder and all of its subfolders are automatically shared with all the atten um, attendee or all of the assignees and the same rights are applied to every folder. You can drag and drop into these, meaning if you drag a folder in, it will automatically get shared to those same people. And if you drag out of this folder tree, uh, the rights will be removed. If you try to modify the sharing rights of one of the subfolders, it will be completely disabled and, and tell you to, to go back to the parent folder in order to make any changes. It's now treated as a single entity. In addition, the, re the recipients of the shared folder won't have to walk through a myriad or, a, or multiple shared folder notifications and wizards. They'll just get one for the entire folder tree. They'll walk through it once and then the entire tree will be shared with them. And it's obviously easy just to remove that share or drag that uh, folder in or out of that. As you see, uh, all of these are what it looks like from the shared aspect as well as from the share E. The next area around the share, the uh, information sharing section is we have added relevant sorting. Relevant sorting is applied to three areas of the product, the name completion control, categories, and folders. And what we've tried to do is surface the most important and most often used data to the top of your list. So now when I'm name completing, in this particular case, Antonio Gates comes up first even though uh, he may not be sorted in the same or sorted alphabetically correctly. So when I have a user like John Adams and John Watson, but the person that I correspond with most is John Watson, when I type in John, John Watson will appear first because they're more relevant they're the ones that I am interacting with the most. The last area that we want to talk about in the Windows client is our integrations with third-party products. We've integrated Skype into the product. And the first way that you'll notice that when you have turned this on as the administrator and the end user has enabled this capability is that we will recognize phone numbers in the subject and message body and they will become hot links. And when you click on that number, it will automatically dial that number through the Skype integration. In addition, we've also not only enabled click-to-call capability, but we've also enabled Skype presence and Skype SMS and other instant messaging capability directly out of your, your GroupWise Windows client. So now you can stay in your Windows client and have access to some of that Skype capability like presence. I can tell if that person is online. I can automatically dial them, send them an, a Skype instant message, or even send them an SMS message. We've also added the ability to send SMS messages directly from GroupWise, whether you have Skype or not. You can now go to the contact indicate what carrier that they have, and then when you send a message from GroupWise, you can indicate that you want to send them an SMS message instead. You can type that in your GroupWise Windows client, and when you send it, they will receive that on their telephone. The next section that we want to share with you are some of the new enhancements and changes that we've made in the GroupWise Web Access client. 
I won't here I won't walk through each one of these because we want to get to the demo section, but I want to give you a feel for the new features that are coming in web access just from a list standpoint. We concentrated a lot on the new look and feel and then adding particular features and capabilities that our end users ask for most often. As you see, it is a brand new look and feel. New color scheme, new arrangements of buttons, and new capability that we believe will make web access more attractive to more of your end user population so that the web access may become their only client. First of all, you get Web 2.0 functionality. We've changed the architecture slightly. For those administrators who are on the line, there will not be any longer the Web Access um, agent called Gwinter. That's no longer part of our network topology. So now we can scale better and we can add features faster because we have created this or engineered the servlet to talk directly to the post office through the SOAP protocol. As you see, you have a graphical calendar. It's all new in the new look and feel. You have the different views of the day, week, and month, and you can obviously navigate your calendar forward and backward very easily. Great locations for notes, tasks, and then we obviously support multiple calendars. In addition, the contacts is also have that same new look and feel, and there are some new features in there that we'll, we'll show you in just a minute. And of course, search. Search is also part of uh, web access. The first major feature we want to share with you is graphical free busy. Before you just got a text view, now when you go to free busy people in using the web access client, you get a graphical view and it's very easy to tell when there's free space or a free opportunity to schedule an appointment with the attendees you've selected. Anywhere where there's a white space and you can drag and uh, you can drag that time indicator across the calendar and it will tell you when you're busy and who's available and what time is the most opportune time to schedule these people for an appointment. In addition, we've also added recurring appointments. So you can set up recurring appointments in web access just as easily as you can in the Windows client. And we've used that same metaphor and that same user experience that I showed you in the Windows client. Daily, weekly, monthly, and uh, yearly type of capability that you can set up in web access. And of course, you can also have the small date pickers to allow you to navigate to the occurrences or date ranges that you are expecting. This one is a little bit hard to see, but if you look closely, the next feature that I want to show you is column sort. And if you look at the header for date, it has a little arrow indicator uh, indicating that this list is sorted by date and whether it's ascending or descending. You can now easily sort the columns by just clicking on the column header. Here I have uh, moved the subject and its order, and any of those I can sort this list by, name, subject, date, or size. And there's the name one. The last feature that I want to share with you about web access has to do with being able to add photos to your contact. Any photos that you've added in your personal address book also will show up in web access. And obviously you can add them in web access as well. So adding photos to any of your personal address books is a new feature of GroupWise 2012. And that takes us to the next area, the uh, iPad templates. As you all know, we have a mobility solution called Novell Data Synchronizer that allows you to synchronize data between GroupWise and any active sync enabled device, including iOS, Android, Symbian, Windows Mobile, etc. Therefore, we already have a solution for your iPad users, a synchronization solution. What we're introducing now and what I want to tell you about is a second option for, for your iPad users. These users are ones that do not get provisioned or don't need to get provisioned on the DataSync server, but they want to have access to their group-wise data. And so what we've created is a set of iPad-specific web templates that allow them to launch their Safari browser on the iPad 
navigate to their web access portal and get tablet sized and ready and tablet functional experience on their iPad. This, <coughs> this doesn't require the administrator to provision them on the DataSync server or to set them up in any special way. If, they, if the administrator has deployed web access, then these users will already uh, will automatically be able to access uh, their group-wise data on their Safari browser from their iPad. And this is what it looks like. As you see, you have a folder list or a item list here on your left, and as you select those, the content is displayed on the right. You have multi-select so that you can move or mark several items red. You have all of the common functionality to reply and forward or even accept and decline appointments. You have name completion when you go to compose a new email. You have the ability of all of the most common actions, as I mentioned. You have mail, calendar, um, find at the bottom that allows you to search for content and have it displayed easily inside of this experience. And you also have, uh, looks like sent items here and support for multiple attachments. This is what that find results view looks like. And that takes us to the end of the demo today for GroupWise 2012. And I wanted to give you at least a brief view of what is coming in the future for GroupWise. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit of the roadmap. ASCOT was the code name for GroupWise 2012. That uh, product obviously has shipped now and is now available. We do plan in uh, this summer to release a hot patch or a quality release for GroupWise 2012. It has the code name of Cardiff, and we plan to release that uh, sometime this summer, depending on the feedback that we hear from our customers around GroupWise 2012. And then the next major release of GroupWise is code name Windermere. And as you've seen, we've changed the name of GroupWise. It's no longer a version number associated with uh, the name GroupWise, but it's now called GroupWise 2012 to help signal that we are committing to more frequent releases of the product. And so Windermere we expect to release in the first quarter of 2013, and it is focused primarily and principally on two areas, moving away from Console 1 and adding a web administrator functionality and then expanding our e-directory support to also include Active Directory. Those will be the principal drivers for this release. However, we do expect and hope that we can uh, do more than that, and some of the other areas that we expect to expand and do some work on have to do with fixing some of those customer reported issues that have been in our database and we haven't come around to, as well as trying to take a step forward in a few areas social business, doing some dynamic contacts and social threading, integrating instant messaging into the product even deeper, continuing our expansion of Vibe integrations, and then expanding the web templates that I just showed you on the iPad to other tablets like Android and Playbook. Also wanted to give you a view of the data synchronizer roadmap. As you know, Delaware shipped last August. ENU is the next major release of, the, of uh, Data Synchronizer. We've been concentrating on some quality updates, and we, update, we uh, released one in December and expect to release Update 2 at the end of February, so just in a couple of weeks, and then an Update 3 before we turn our attention to ENU and focusing on task support. As you see, we have multiple releases there for Data Synchronizer planned for this year. That is an agile development model. We release about every four to six weeks, or six to eight weeks, I'm sorry, six to eight weeks on that product uh, to help keep up with the expanding and growing mobility market as well as to close the feature gap as quickly as possible with that technology. And then the last area that I want to show you real briefly is about Messenger. We're very excited to announce that Messenger now has a roadmap and that we are expanding that product and adding new functionality and capability to that. We released Crestone in late 2010. Dylan, the next release of this product, is scheduled for this summer. 
and it will include an instant messaging iPhone and Android app and um, support for multiple connections. The web client, we, we also have on the roadmap and hope to be able to do that, but we, we uh, believe right now that that may get pushed into Eaglewood. Uh, we did see a demo this, just this last week on the progress they've made so far with the iPhone app, and it looks fantastic. Here are some key resources. If you'd like to get more information on GroupWise 2012, the roadmap, or any of the information that I've presented here to, to you today, there's the main website, there's the partner page if you're looking for the ecosystem of third-party products that support GroupWise. There's the link to the GroupWise blog. And then the one that I really want to highlight is we have announced and released a dynamic GroupWise roadmap application that allows you to see dynamically and transparently the GroupWise roadmap. And we'll update that often. You can come back and see at any time if priorities have changed, if schedules have been uh, modified at all, or the scope of a particular product has changed at all. And we will update that regularly, and you can come back and look at that at any time that you'd like. There's a whole bunch of new how-to videos around GroupWise 2012 to learn to uh, teach you and to share with your end users a little bit more detail on what is coming in GroupWise or what is uh, available in GroupWise 2012. And uh, we've just announced a big training promotion, and details about that not only can be found on the blog, but also at this particular link. And if you would want, if you are interested in a more in-depth roadmap review with one of our sales engineers or one of our product managers or our inside sales team, please go to that uh, final link and schedule a roadmap review. I talked to you a little bit about our partner ecosystem. Uh, as you know, we have a very robust and active partner system that provides solutions from archive and backup to antivirus, anti-spam, to training, to community, to unified communications, to uh, migrating to GroupWise, as well as a bunch of consulting and other types of capabilities and functionality uh, in this space. Also includes e-discovery or compliance types of things. So if you're looking for a partner or a, a particular need in a particular area, please visit our partner page and take advantage of one of our partners in this space. And now I think, Amy, I'm to a question and answer period. And uh, anyone who's on the line, I'm certainly well, uh, willing to entertain any of your questions. Okay, perfect. So again, if we do have any questions, go ahead and put them through on the chat or the Q&A. And I have seen a few come through. Okay, so first of all, um, we had a question Someone asked, multi-columns don't exist in Mac version in GroupWise 807. Does it work in 2012? It's a great question. The, uh, the Mac client and the Linux client did not change for GroupWise 2012. They're still available and obviously supported. You can always, uh, you can always run older clients against newer post offices, but the functionality in, in the Linux and Mac client has not changed for GroupWise 2012. As we return our focus to this product, um, we expect to be able to announce some new capabilities in those areas, but we don't have anything to announce yet today. Okay, so it looks like our next question. Um, let's see. Sharing files from directory and work in files, does it lock files if, it ha if another user has it open? So if, if you are in a shared folder and you've put a document in that particular folder, yes, the document management still continues to work and you can lock the file. That is one of the options that you have there. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what they're referring to, but it seems like it. That hasn't changed, however, in GroupWise 2012. So the functionality that you have um, would expect would, would be expected to continue to continue to work as is. Okay. Uh, the next question: Will there be integration with SharePoint? That's a great question. 
We have uh, released, um, let's see, a little over a year ago, a Novell Data Synchronizer connector that allows you to connect uh, SharePoint data with GroupWise. And so I encourage you to look to that solution uh, to see if that meets your particular needs. That is a solution that we have currently in the marketplace to be able to integrate SharePoint data with GroupWise data. Okay, perfect. And then, let's see, we had more questions too. So, is the priority sorting only applied to the frequent contacts book or will it work on all address books? Currently, it is, uh, it is just across your personal address books. And so as you do the relevant sorting, I think that's what you're referring to, as you do the relevant sorting, it is, uh, first of all, one book, and as you transition to another book in that search order, then it will also um, be relevant to that. But it is just personal address books right now. Okay. And another question. Windmere lists Android and Playbooks. Client. What about the Mac client? Um, so that, that particular um, bullet item refers to the iPad web templates that we introduced in GroupWise 2012. We, we will just be doing some validation of those and allowing them to work on those other tablets. Um, I think you're referring in particular to the Mac desktop and currently the GroupWise 8 Mac client still works with GroupWise 2012 and ships with GroupWise 2012, and we don't have anything new to announce there. Uh, we do have uh, the Web Access client that is all brand new in GroupWise 2012, and that may be a better experience for you on the Mac uh, currently. Uh, but right now, stay tuned for uh, what we plan to do future-wise with the Mac client. Question. Curious if you can add pictures to the system address book. I'm sorry, not yet. That is planned. You saw that in Windermere, what we refer to as dynamic contacts. Dynamic contacts is maybe a fancy word for, for what you're used to with profiles. What we want to allow you to do is each end user to be able to manage their system address book contact, their own system address book contact which will include being able to add photos and update photos, but that is uh, currently planned for Windermere. Um, the only place that you can add photos today are in personal address books, and what we've done is expanded that functionality to the web access client in uh, GroupWise 2012. Okay, so the next question. Why was the retract resend removed, or is there a retract feature but done differently? You can always retract appointments, um, meaning delete them, and that functionality still exists. But what we did change is resend. Resend is no longer needed because what we've added is the ability to edit, meaning resend would delete the appointment and send a new one. What edit does is simply update it. And in most cases, what people were doing, they just wanted to make some change. And what edit allows you to do is make those change without impacting all of the recipients, meaning they won't get a new item in their mailbox that they have to accept or decline. Those changes will just seamlessly be added to the appointment already on their calendar. In some cases, obviously, they'll get a new accept and decline. If the date, time, or place changes, then we will do essentially a resend, and they'll get a new appointment to accept and decline. But if they just add a recipient, or they modify a spelling mistake, or they add an attachment like an agenda later, then the appointment will just get updated, and there's no need in that edit to have to retract the previous one. It just happens for you. It's, um, so it's a better experience is what we hope. Now, there is one other use case. People sometimes use a, an existing appointment as kind of a template for a new appointment, and what they would do is they'd go to resend, they would make all their changes, and then they wouldn't retract, and essentially they just create a new appointment. That functionality is now, now called duplicate. So when you right-click on that appointment that already exists and you want to duplicate it or use it as a template, 
you choose duplicate, you make all your changes, you push send, and it just happens. No retract needed or prompt. So that's the change. And if you want to look at more details, we just did a blog on that uh, this last week to explain a little bit how that works. I think what you'll find is most users will say, yeah, this is how it should have worked in the first place. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, looks like our next question is, the GroupWise monitor can analyze and present GWIA account files but this feature is broken since GroupWise 8 SP1. Is it working now? It's a great question. I don't know specifically um, if that has been resolved. I, I'm sorry, I'd have to. you'd probably have to contact our support department or contact me directly and I can look into it. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head if that was resolved or not. Okay. Uh, will the iPad web template allow users to connect and bypass any security measures? We want to limit access and wipe remotely, et cetera. Yeah, the good part about the web access templates is there's no data that is a, that is essentially synchronized to uh, the, the tablet. It's just a web view. So the same security re would, reply, would apply to your iPad template solution as it does to any web access user. So if you've granted access to, web, to the web access client, all we've done is extended that and given certain templates that are sized and tablet ready, you know, gestures like hand gestures and, and the scrolling and those types of things because you don't have a mouse. Uh, all we've done is extended that to the iPad. So you, you're still secure in the sense that no data is getting out to that, to that iPad and the same security or access model is exactly like your web access portal. is will GroupWise doc management eventually tie together file management with Novell, Novell Vibe? Uh, uh, Novell doc management, yes, that is our long-term plan, is to transition our users to uh, that are using document management into the Novell Vibe, our sister collaboration product that provides some document management, contact management, and team workspace capability. And uh, we are working through some of the utilities to be able to make that happen. But the, the uh, long-term goal is to transition document management in GroupWise to the document management capability and functionality in Novell Vibe. Okay. Will all address books sync through Novell Data Sync? Um, currently, all of the address books do except the system address book, and in most experiences, that's a search. You can search your system address book from your mobile device to be able to uh, get to those contacts in the, but yes, you can uh, op optionally choose to synchronize um, different address books to your uh, data sync device. Now, not all devices or OS platforms support that. Some of them will only support one, one uh, personal address book. By default, we choose your, um, your named personal address book, not your frequent contacts. And so your named personal book is the one that gets synchronized by default. And you can have your administrator change that to your frequent book or, or another personal book as well. Okay. Our next question about iPad support. Is it only for web access or GroupWise 2012 includes some clients to synchronize email, calendar, and contact? Great question. Since September 2010, that functionality existed. However, we do just use the native applications on the, uh, on the iPad, meaning the native mail, calendar, and contacts applications, and you connect it to your GroupWise system using Novell Data Synchronizer, and it will automatically synchronize. Now, that does require that your administrator provision you on the Data Sync server and grant you access to that to be able to do that. What we're introducing in GroupWise 2012 is a second option, which is simply the Safari browser, and then you navigate to your web access portal. 
And then does the iPad template work for the iPhone too? The, the experience is slightly different because of your real estate. Um, the, the best experience on your iPhone is still Data Synchronizer. And then the next one is probably the simple templates. You will be able to do, to, uh, you know, kind of test that, but it is a, a slightly different real estate experience, meaning uh, you'd need to slide things in and out instead of seeing them side by side. Console One is the same administration tool for GroupWise, or does GroupWise 2012 include another administration tool? Great question. Console One is still the administration console for GroupWise 2012, and that is uh, our plan is to move away from that in Windermere in the uh, coming major release, and then it will go to a web-based um, administration model. It won't be iManager, but you'll be able to launch from iManager and access from there. Uh, but it, it will be a web-based administration model. Okay. For those customers who are no longer on maintenance and have version 7, is there going to be a promo to get up to date with the maintenance? And with your yes, please call us and we can talk about that. We can certainly give you options and uh, make that very attractive for you to upgrade to GroupWise 2012 and get back on maintenance. And within web access, can you monitor and or restrict any attachments which are downloaded from a person's web access client to workstation or mobile devices? I'm not sure I understood that uh, question fully. Um, do we have any mechanisms that restrict users from downloading attachments through the web access portal? Not currently. GroupWise doc management eventually tied. Oh, we answered that already. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see. Um, will shared proxy calendars be viewable via Data Sync? Is that functionality on the roadmap? It is on the roadmap. It, it, it isn't currently. All of the shared data, which includes shared folders, shared address books, and proxy data, is not currently synchronized to your mobile device but all that shared data is on the roadmap. We did expect that to have happened already and it has been on previous roadmaps and you've probably seen that um, if you've been watching very closely. Uh, we did expect that we'd be able to ship that last year, but we did have some other priorities that, that kind of got in the way of that, uh, including iOS 5, some scalability um, requests, as well as some enhanced administrator and troubleshooting things that we've added. And so that kind of shifted our priority for that. It's still uh, our intention to support shared data with Data Synchronizer, and it is scheduled for um, uh, later this year. Okay. Um, the next question is, do the iPad templates work on Android tablets also? Um, they're not currently supported on the Android tablets. As you saw on the Windermere slide, that is planned for Windermere. It may even happen in Cardiff, meaning the, the quality release schedule for this summer. The reality is, is we expect them to work on all tablets. We just did not have the time to do the QA effort that to, to validate that and to officially support it. Uh, you can certainly try that and see uh, the experience that you have there, and that's what we're doing right now. If we don't have any major glitches with that or doesn't require a lot of engineering to get that to work on the Android tablet, then we will release that as part of Cardiff. If there are some significant changes that we need to make, then we'll make those and it will be part of Windermere. Uh, but you can, certainly try, you can certainly try that today. It's just kind of an unsupported, meaning we haven't tested it yet. We certainly expect it. We didn't uh, do anything that would preclude it that we know of, but we haven't gone through all of our use cases and validation tests to say that we officially support it yet. Okay. Any plan to change archive to allow archiving to shared storage so the archive would be available to or from multiple clients, like web access? Um, it's probably the number one request that we have from web access is to provide an archive capability or a um, back-end 
solution for archive instead of a personal archive. We do have several partners in this space today that provide this type of solution. And so if you need a solution today, um, I would point you to several of our partners that offer great solutions in this area. Um, and right now, I don't think that we have a commitment that we'll be making any of those types of changes in group-wise. It's still under consideration. It could happen, um, but currently it's not in our plans, at least not for Windermere. All right. If Console 1 is going away, will GroupWise 2012 be integrated into ZenWorks 11? Uh, great question. Um, the infrastructure and stuff looks a lot like the ZenWorks web console. However, it's not an integration into that. It will be a separate one. Uh, as if anybody who's followed us in that knows that the idea of doing a all-inclusive management console is a great idea, but in practice it has struggled to uh, fulfill all of those promises. And uh, whether that was with NW Admin or Console One or iManager, uh, they have all had their limited success in that in one way or another. And it's difficult to align all of the products and all of the release schedules and the different needs of all of those into one super management console. And so I think the strategy is better and uh, probably clearer if we keep them separate, but integrate them in certain ways, like single sign-on capability, as well as being able to get from one to the other easily and to have a common look and feel between all of them. And that will be our goal more than having one super administrator console. Okay, perfect. Um, I don't see any other questions at this point. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and put them through on the chat or the Q&A. Um, but Dean, thank you for all the great information. And You're certainly ahead. welcome. And uh, if anybody does want to reach out or has further questions, uh, lots of different ways to do that, uh, either directly to me uh, on the blog or contact one of your sales reps, and we will certainly get you the information and the answers that you need. And then please join us in one of the community events, in the road tours, or in some of those uh, resources that I gave you in the slide deck. And Amy will make the slide deck available to all the attendees. Okay, perfect. Then I did have one more question come through. Um, have the notifications um, been fixed so that when a person clicks snooze for five minutes, it will actually snooze for five minutes and not pop up again after a minute or two? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that particular thing. Um, that that is interesting. I haven't I haven't had anybody else report that. Not aware that we've made any changes for that. Uh, I don't know what version of GroupWise you're running, so may maybe we, that we need to take that one offline and, and work that particular issue individually. Okay, 